What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on installing and configuring DWL. DWL is basically a drop-in replacement for DWM, but for the Wayland display server. DWM is often referred to as the most minimal window manager you can run on Xorg. However, due to Xorg's client server model, many people view Wayland as a better endgame solution for security and simplicity. If you're someone who loves the simplicity, extensibility, and minimality of DWM, but prefers the Wayland display protocol over Xorg, this is a perfect solution for you. Alright, so I am on Arch Linux today for this tutorial, but this will work on most distros, including NixOS and Gentoo. So if you aren't on Arch Linux, don't worry. Installation instructions for other distributions will be provided in a written guide to accompany this tutorial. So for Arch Linux, this is a list of all the dependencies we need to get my build of DWL up and running. We are gonna want Wayland and Wayland protocols. We need WL Roots version 19 as a dependency for DWL. We're gonna use Foot today as a terminal emulator. We need Base Devil on Arch so that we can compile DWL with GNU Make. We do need Git to clone a couple repos. We're gonna use W menu as a replacement for D menu. We will be using WL clipboard as a Wayland clipboard tool. We'll also be using Grim slurp for screenshots. We'll use Sway BG for wallpapers. And we're gonna need a Firefox web browser. And we're also gonna need a JetBrains mono nerd font. So let's go ahead and install these by typing sudo pacman sy. And I've got this big dependency list here, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter. All right, so let's go ahead and make a directory here called dot files with mkdir dot files. And we will cd into that. And let's clone dwl and sl status into this here. It's going to be codeberg.org slash dwl slash dwl.git. And for SL status, it'll be git.suckless.org slash SL status. All right, looks like we're good to go there and we're ready to jump into modifying the config file of DWL. So I am modifying this from inside of a session of DWM, ironically. But if you're on a TTY, you can still do all this, which is Vim. So let's jump right into our config.def.h file first and set some sane defaults before launching DWL. So CD into DWL here. And let's take a look at what we have here. And we are going to want to jump right into that config.def.h file. So let's just do Vim config.def.h. And this file is where all of your config stuff lives. We're gonna go ahead and change a lot of this. And as always, the first thing I wanna do is change my modifier key from alt to super. So we'll go ahead and jump to line 110 here. And that's where that is set. And if we read this comment, all we have to do is change this from modifier alt to modifier logo. So that looks good. Now there is a place here to change the key repeat delay settings. It's baked right into config.def.h since it is a Wayland compositor. So let's go ahead and change that. For me, I like to have it set to 235 respectively. That tells my compositor to wait 200 milliseconds before starting the repeat, but only repeat it 35 times per second. And that makes it easy to fly up and down a Vim file with J and K. It's similar to that X set R rate 235 command that I always run on the X org side of things. All right, lastly, let's change up some key binds here. So we head over to this keys array here and I'll change my W menu bind from super P to super D. And because I'm doing that, the increment master has to be switched because otherwise it would create a duplicate keybind. So we'll put that at super P. For the terminal, I like it just to be super enter. So we'll just remove that shift mask there. And the last thing we'll change will be that kill client. I prefer this to be super Q with no shift mask. And that's all I'm gonna do right now, just so I, we can kind of see a pretty base version of what DWL looks like. But if you wanna change some more stuff before launching DWL, just feel free to fly around this file and edit things to your preferences. Let's save and quit that file. And we can just run sudo make clean install here. And there we go. So if you're already in a TTY, you can just run DWL here, but I'm actually in an X session, so I'm gonna kill that. And literally all you have to do here is just run DWL 
And there we go, blazingly fast startup. So we're in DWL now, and as you can see, it's literally a blank screen with a mouse cursor. That is the extreme minimalism of DWL. We don't have a bar, we don't have anything. So because DWL is so minimal, we literally have to patch it to just get a bar up and running here. So let's open up Firefox here. Our W menu is binded to super D. <laughs> Look at that beautiful W menu there. And let's just type Firefox and we'll search DWL patches. It's gonna be that second link here, user maintained repository for DWL patches. And we'll go to patches here to get that bar patch. So I'm gonna get this main one here. I'll right click, save link as. We'll put it in dot files, DWL. We'll make a new folder called patches. We'll save that there. And we can quit Firefox here with super Q. And let's open up a terminal here with super enter. And we'll CD into that dot files directory right into the DWL directory here. And if we do an LS on patches, we see we have that bar patch. So let's go ahead and apply that patch here by typing patch dash I patches bar dot patch. And we do see there was one failure here. So let's go ahead and investigate what that is. For this, all we need to do is open up that config.def.h dot reg file. And it looks like the only thing that failed was a keybind is missing to toggle the bar. So we can just add that manually. So we'll go ahead and do config.def.h and we'll go to that keys array here. And we can just put that keybind anywhere. Just remember to remove that plus. And it doesn't actually contradict any of our other binds because it is just B. So that should be good to go. And let's customize this a little bit while we're already in this file here. Because the bar is going to load a font, let's change that font here. We're obviously gonna make that JetBrains mono nerd font here, so let's type that out. And let's make that bold by typing style equals bold. We'll change that font to 16 size. And while we're in here, let's make that W menu prompt look a little bit better. So we'll search for W menu. And we see that our W menu CMD here is just W menu run. now. I think we can add a few parameters to this to make it look a little bit better. So we'll add dash F to specify the font. And that font's gonna be, of course, JetBrains Mono Nerd Font 16 to match our bar. We're gonna do a vertical list here with dash L and specify 10 items in that vertical list. And that should be good. So just save that and let's quit out of this file here. Now we can remove config.h so that when we make and install this, it's going to copy config.def.h over again, because that's the file with all of our changes. So we'll do a sudo make clean install. And there we go. Let's jump back into the TTY here by hitting super shift Q. And we'll go ahead and rerun DWL here by just typing DWL. Awesome. There's our bar. And if we run W menu here with super D, we do see it does match that bar. And it is in that vertical line that we specified. So it's actually readable. Let's jump into SL status. Let's open up a terminal here with super enter. And we have already cloned SL status. So we really just need to build it. So let's go ahead and CD dot files SL status. And we're just gonna use the defaults here just for now to demonstrate this. So let's just do sudo make clean install. Beautiful. Something worth noting here about how DWL works. We actually need to pipe the SL status standard output into DWL. And if we take a look at the man page for SL status, we see it has that dash S option, which will write standard out instead of the WM name. So just to show you guys what that does, let's just do SL status dash S. And it's just constantly writing the date and time into the standard out. So let's quit back out to a TTY here again. And let's run SL status dash S and we'll pipe that into DWL. And there we go. So now we've got a bar and an SL status and it's blazingly fast. So the next thing we need to do is grab a wallpaper because this wouldn't even be a build without one. And we can set that with Sway BG. So head over to wallhaven.cc and pick your favorite wallpaper here. But for me, for today, in order to honor Luke Smith, because we are embracing digital minimalism, I'm going to go ahead and use a throwback wallpaper from one of his DWM videos. So once you're satisfied with your wallpaper, go ahead and save it to a folder on your home directory. I saved mine to walls and called it wall1.png. So to set that wallpaper, we're gonna run sway bg-i 
walls, wall1.png, and disown. What that does is that means that whenever I close this terminal, it will not stop that SwayBG process. So we do have that wallpaper persisting. But the issue here is that we want this wallpaper to be enabled whenever we launch DWL. So we do need to create a one line startup script to make that happen. So let's go ahead and make that script right on our home directory here for now. And we'll just call that script start dwl.sh. And we want that to be a POSIX compliant SH script. So we'll just shebang bin SH at the top here. And it's literally gonna be one line. It'll be SL status dash S pipe DWL. And DWL allows you to pass in commands to it with another dash S. So we'll just dash S here on DWL. And the command we wanna run when DWL launches on startup it's gonna be sh dash c quote swaybg dash i home tony walls wall one dot png and we can close out those quotes and i actually do have a key bind in vim to automatically make this executable by pressing space x so let's save this and i'll run that space x command and it just runs shamad plus x start wl.sh if you don't have that key bind, of course, just close this script and type chmod plus x start dwl.sh. So I am putting this script right in my home directory because I'm not using a display manager, but if you are going to use a display manager, I do advise that you move this script over to your .local bin folder and add that to your path. I provided instructions on how to do all that in this tutorial in the written form. So just check out that if you want to explore how to add this to your display manager. All right, let's go ahead and quit out of this here with the super shift Q. And now we can test that start DWL script by just typing dot slash start DWL.sh. And there we go. We've got SL status, our bar and our wallpaper. Awesome, we can move on to the next step. The next step here is gonna to be to add a script that allows us to screenshot here. And screenshotting is a one liner here. It's just grim dash G which will take the selection and we're gonna select stuff from slurp and we'll pipe that into WL copy. And then as you can see here, it prompts you for a selection tool. So we'll select an area on our screen here and there you go. Just gonna be copying a selection right to our clipboard. In order to set that up, I've already put that into my DWL configuration and I'll go ahead and show you guys here in the next step. So at this point, the world is really our oyster. And again, for me, the first thing I see as a major problem is that there's a visual indicator that a workspace or tag has actually an occupied program on it. And it's that box. And I don't like that. In DWM, there's actually a patch to remove those boxes, but there's not one in DWL. So I had to simply modify the source code. It wasn't that bad. I just jumped into DWL.c. I found this section here where it just does some logic on if something is occupied, then we draw a rectangle here. And what I did at first was I just commented this part out and I refreshed and rebuilt and actually got rid of those boxes. So I guess it was a three line fix, but still that didn't solve the actual problem for me because that just got rid of the boxes. And I wanted something more akin to my DWM setup. So I actually spent a lot of time tinkering with this. And while I was in this file, I did a lot more because I wanted a specific setup where I could differentiate my active, occupied, and empty workspaces, just like I do in my Qtile, Hyperland, and DWM setups. So I tinkered with that file a lot. And I'm not gonna go through all those changes right now. So I've went ahead and just pulled down my version of DWL here. And I'll drop a link to that repo below the subscribe button. And I'll showcase some of it right now. So like I've said, I went ahead and downloaded my own build of DWL here and my own build of SL status. So let's run that startup script here. And there you go. We've got gaps here for the patches. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice here is that we've changed the SL status to actually take colors. Now I've got a bunch of different widgets here that are inspired by DistroTube's Xmonad configuration. And I have a kernel widget here, but on my laptop, I do use a battery widget and that'll be in my SL status repo. And as far as the indicators I was talking about earlier, let's say we move over to a tag number three, we see that tag one is highlighted in cyan. So we know that there's something on tag one. We know that it's occupied. So we can go back to tag one. We do see that the purple underline on tag three tells us that we're actually on tag three. So this is the way that I like to differentiate the tags and this works for my situation. And there was no patch for this. So again, I had to modify the C code for DWL, but I would recommend taking my build and extending it from there. So we'll do a quick run through of some of my binds to kind of explain how they work here. So super enter is gonna open a terminal here and super Q is gonna quit that program. 
Super D runs D menu or W menu in this case. So we can start something like Firefox here. And if we wanna move that to a different tag, we'll do super shift three and there it is over there. So if we have two terminals open here, we can do super H to increase the size of whatever terminal I have open here. We can alternate between each terminal with super J and K or each program really it doesn't have to be a terminal. And super S is that screenshot tool. And there you go. Super B hides the bar and Super A removes the gaps. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you have any questions or recommendations on any other Linux related content or free and open source content, just as usual, drop a comment and I will put it in the pipeline. So thanks for checking out the video and as always, it would not be a proper ending without an obligatory NeoFetch.